The views and opinions expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of the staff and management of KLAY or those who advertise their products or services on this station. Welcome to another episode. Thank you for joining us. This program is intended to be a resource for all things real estate. Please always seek the advice of a properly licensed professional before applying any of the information spoken here and always seek the advice of your attorney. Uh, this is Perrin Walker, NMLS number 173529, loan officer. I work with Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation, NMLS 2289. We are an equal housing lender. This is not an offer to enter into an agreement. All customers will qualify. Information rates and programs are subject to change without notice. All, program, all products are subject to credit and a product property approval. NMLS number 173529. For all the latest on the show, follow us and comment on our Facebook page at Locking It In. For topic suggestions, to sponsor the show, or if you'd like to be a guest, we'd love to hear from you. Send us an email at ask at lockingitin.com. Well, here we are. <laughs> it's our first show. Um, and uh, really, I think uh, this is the show to w listen to, isn't it? Uh, because uh, it's our first show. It's, it's going to be a riot. So here we are. Um, yeah. Um, welcome to the show. And we have also in the studio today um, our special guest, Karina Obar from the Washington State Housing Finance Commission. And we also have um, our in another in-studio guest, Andrea Basinger, um, a realtor from the same brokerage as myself, Coldwell Banker Bain. Um, she's going to help us deliver um, the latest um, updates on the market. Um, so here we are, and um, why are we here? Okay, so I can talk to myself. <laughs> All right. Um, um, we decided to create this show because we wanted to facilitate better communication and, and education between real estate industry professionals and consumers um, in regard to buying and selling real estate. Uh, many people, they don't, they don't bother or never learn about real estate until they need to buy or sell. Um, oftentimes, the only, they have a lot of fun on Zillow, but unless you're really thinking about buying, you'll only use it most likely to check the value of your home. So here we are serving it up in live conversation with real professionals on topics which are interesting and relevant to our listeners. Um, we'll keep you informed and uh, hopefully, uh, uh, make it so that buying a home is more natural, like buying a car, um, rather than something that we're dreading or fearing. Deb and I have been married uh, 27 years. Um, it, we spent our 25th anniversary in Singapore. Uh, we enjoy hiking and back backpacking in our spare time, w which we don't have any. Um, my favorite thing about my job is uh, helping buyers get into their first home who don't think they could. I like helping people improve their financial position as well. Um, we have Andrea here um, and De Deb, and they're going to discuss the market. Yeah, well, so um, just this week, um, Coldwell Banker Bain uh, released their second quarter market report. Um, and uh, we have some interesting, uh, interesting things happening in the real estate industry. Um, for instance, inventory. A Andrea, wh what have you been seeing out there in your uh, in your day to day 
Yeah, let me kind of go over that. Um, so one of the big things that we've been seeing is just kind of that shift in, um, you know, being all seller driven market. Um, just over uh, 14,000 new listings got added to the inventory in May. And um, in June, another 13,000, a little over 13,000 new listings got added to the inventory as well. So we've kind of seen um, uh, just the buyers having a little bit more a, of a, a, a leg in, instead, a leg up, I guess, instead of having um, 20 multiple offers, you might only find yourself in a three or four offer, multiple offer situation. So I think it's given the buyers a little bit more confidence um, to go out and, and look for homes and not be so discouraged um, when they're um, taking a look at this market. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So... Um, well, um, before we get too far into the report, I guess, um, we want to tell you, um, what's going to be happening on the show, um, in the upcoming weeks. Um, we have, um, with us next week, um, Roger Merrill, he's an inspector, and we're going to, of course, be talking about home inspections. If you have any questions for, for Roger or any, any issues you want to, um, have, mentioned on the show, um, please um, go to our Facebook page at Locking It In, or you can email us at ask at lockingitin.com. Okay, now, uh, this, this is a new adventure for me, you know, I, I'm, you know, stuttering around here, um, <laughs> talking to myself with, with three other guests in the studio, <laughs> um, and, um, I just wanted to share with you what, what brought me here. I, you know, for, for years have been a software engineer, and that's a quite an exciting profession, as you might guess, sitting in front of a computer uh, writing code. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun, really, um, and especially um, I love doing that. I could do it anywhere in the world, like especially Asia. I spent a lot of time, you know, working and traveling uh, throughout Asia, and it was just, it was such an adventure. I, I really hated to give it up, but I was ready for something new, and that, that thing was real estate, and the radio show, that's just, you know, making the adventure, you know, more, just, just that much more exciting. So, um, so here we are. And after the show, um, normally on a Saturday, if, if, yeah, before I was showing houses, we would, we would spend our days on the mountain. Yes, we love hiking and backpacking, um, and in the wintertime, skiing. Um, after, on the way back, we'd have some ice cream or maybe Mexican food. <laughs> That's always been my favorite. Um, so... Yeah, here we are on a new adventure, and um, yeah, we want to know what you think. So yeah, please let us know on your on our Facebook page. Okay, now for this report, um, so it, it it looks like we have about maybe. Uh, the inventory is, 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 is a little bit better, but, but maybe, maybe the, the buyers are slowing down a little bit. Um, yeah, I, well, I can kind of chime in on that. So currently we're at about like one and a half months of um, supply in the market. Um, with this area, honestly, adding around 100,000 plus net new jobs annually in the Pacific Northwest and building is a little... Um, less around 30,000 new single family homes. So these trends will likely continue in this smaller um, one and a half months of supply. We still re remain relatively below a balanced market. Normally we would find a three to five month supply of inventory. Um, so it's not, um, it's not looking like this um, type of uh, trend will change anytime soon. So I think maybe if it, home values, it sounds like, you know, we are just still going through the roof. 
Yeah, well, I have, um, based off of the quarter two um, Coldwell Banker Bain market report, it looks like the Tacoma Lakewood University Place area, um, their average home sale price uh, for quarter two was around 403000 and that was 18 days on the market. So um, that's pretty quick turnaround, and um, an average sold price in the Puyallup Graham area it was around 371000 with 26 days on the market. So um, still under a month um, that homes are being listed and flying right Right off so now you can kind of see um, you know the pricing um, in the area is going the good direction for sellers but at the same time um, we're not seeing you know the five days on the market where a buyer would have to be concerned about those multiple offers so um, yeah I think it's looking pretty good I'm confident in um, you know getting my buyers uh, into homes and having them not get deflated by the market because I still feel there there's ways to um, have contingent offers there's still ways to use your VA loan there um, where a lot of times before it was cash buyers and conventional loans they ended up you know winning every single time and you really had to be strategic and get rid of contingencies and use escalation clauses where um, I'm seeing a little bit less of that it's still needed in the multiple offer situation but I think it gives um, a little bit more of a chance to the little guy and maybe those first time home buyers that have really been looking at this market thinking it's not the right time but um, definitely I would say go out find yourself a real estate professional um, and um, start making those conversations because there's homes ready for you yeah okay what are you seeing in the mortgage end parent well uh, interest rates remain low um, the Federal Reserve Board continues to meet at every month and uh, about three times a year they, they, they've been raising rates. Um, president Trump for the first time of any president in recent history uh, s spoke about the, uh, the market and he was criticized for doing that and the market uh, rebounded uh, the market responded um, negatively uh, on Thursday, but have, have, have any have any of your your, your buyers um, canceled applications or no have you nothing like down? that? No, it's 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 a really small reaction, really. And do you see a lot of first-time home buyers still um, attempting to get in the market? Um, I, I, I do. I know that, um, you know, there's been talk sometimes of, like, the down payment assistant programs and, and funds like that um, being run out sometimes where they don't get those type of um, down payment assistant programs. Is, are you still seeing people able to get those? Yes, I, I do. Uh, the, the, that program is very strong. In fact, when Karina comes on in 15 minutes, um, we will we will hear about how strong they are and and more about that oh that's wonderful thank you thank you parent all right we'll be back in just a minute Adopt U.S. Kids presents Multiple Choice Parenting. You've accidentally cut your daughter's bangs unevenly. Do you A, line things up a centimeter from her hairline? Man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man! No, 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 sweatbands are so hot right now, everyone's wearing them. Like that basketball player and that other basketball player. B, get spiritual. Mom, where did all the mirrors go? A reflection could never capture our true selves. Huh? Beauty is within... Um. C. Look on the bright side. Less time blow drying, more time texting. Or D. Show empathy. 
Mom, you really don't have Ta -da! to. Ta-da! Twinsies! <laughs> I kind of love it. <laughs> As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. This entire piece of music was played with only two instruments, a right hand and a left hand. Hands can do incredible things, but nothing compares to using them to help save a life with hands-only CPR. If an adult suddenly collapses, call 911, then push hard and fast in the center of their chest until help arrives. Hands-only CPR is recommended by the American Heart Association, and it's incredibly easy and effective. For more information on hands-only CPR and to make your own hand symphony track, visit handsonlycpr.org today. The power to help save a life is in your hands. A message from the American Heart Association and the Ad Council. guest, Karina Obar from the Washington State Housing Finance Commission. All right. Welcome back. Okay. Well, Andrea, um, thank you for coming today. Um, so tell us, um, I, I think a lot of people don't know much about the real estate industry, what realtors do and, and you know, what reasons why we do what we do. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about, um, first of all, why why did you become a real estate agent? Yeah, well, I'd love to share. So um, I've actually been in real estate for 13 years. I got my license straight out of high school. I was about 19. Um, I've um, had a love for homes. My dad's actually a, a home builder. So that was just something that I grew up with, I'm passionate about. And then um, me personally, I just really love helping people achieve their goals. So, um, you know, a home is a huge purchase. It's, it's something that not only a house, but they're building a lifestyle together, um, whether you're a first time home buyer or downgrading, um, uh, in downsizing, I should say, not downgrading, sorry, um, downsizing your home, um, different reasons why people buy and sell. And I think just being a part of that is really exciting for me. Um, just to be able to help people with their end goals and whatever that looks like, everybody's path's different to get there and just kind of creating that plan um, and moving them into their homes. So um, that's one of the big reasons. Um, I've been in property management. I've been in the finance side of um, real estate, doing the mortgages and home equities and things like that. So, um, and I guess I just always come back to being able to work directly with clients because I really enjoy people. Um, so that's one of the biggest things too. Um, and being able to help people where some, you know, might not find they will ever buy a house and then all of a sudden we have a conversation and you know in six months time or something like that we just ha we made a plan and they were able to purchase so that's really exciting for me yeah I, I always find it really exciting when when I can help someone especially you know there's so many unique situations out there uh, these days um, the houses are so unaffordable you know just the average family it's just, just really tough these yeah, days. Yeah and I think it's um, really true too just like setting people's expectations for you know what's going to happen a lot of the times people think oh I'm gonna wake up today and buy a house okay great so there's a lot more steps involved in that and I think um, just starting at um, the first spot of hey what does your credit profile look like and connecting with a, a mortgage lender to be able to look at that in a in a different light because um, a lot of people are checking credit karma and and like you said going on Zillow and and looking out their homes worth and it's like those are all great starting points but I think you know sitting down with a real estate professional and a mortgage professional um, they'll be able to get a better picture of how they can move forward um because I get it so many times where maybe they walk into an open house and they're okay let's make an offer but the home is 400,000 and then they're sadly approved for 300 so I think it's just setting those expectations and and meeting them where they're at to be able to get them to where they want to be yes yes 
Yeah, that's one of the things I'm I'm hoping to <laughs> square away with this show. This you know, so people are much more prepared. You know, I, you know, I, I've I've sadly you know seen people unable to buy a home because they were planning on it and you know before they 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 went to their their mortgage guy they decided to buy a car <laughs> and and you know and if you don't understand you know how how it works you may not realize that you you just cost yourself a home because you bought a car um and i think it can go to the flip side of that too how inexpensive it is to purchase a home a lot of people think oh i have to save up my 20,000 i mean 20% and have $10,000 in the bank when really you can use the down payment assistant programs or you know maybe you didn't even know you were qualified for a va loan or different things where hey you can ask the seller for closing costs. There's different things involved where you're actually out of pocket very minimal and you're not ever paying a rent a rent again because rental prices, they're going to keep going up with the housing market the way it is. Um, you know, being able to buy now is going to be a better investment for you. It ebbs and flows. I get that. You're never, it's like the stock market is going to go up and go down. But at the end of the day, I think real estate is always a very safe investment to be able to invest in and have a family in and um, be able to stay somewhere long term where you're not every year renewing your lease or having to move out and um, you know that pride of ownership and that American dream so yeah I, I always kind of thought it as rent as being an, a housing insecurity because really if you're renting you, you never know like tomorrow the, the owner could decide to sell you know right. they could die anything could happen you have to move and you you're not going to get the same deal you had before right especially being on the property management side i actually managed um apartment communities not single family homes but i mean even then rental increases it could be two hundred dollars a year your your income doesn't go up two hundred dollars a year sometimes mm -hmm. people make an extra 10 cents on their dollar um so it just really is a bummer to see those rental increases when when you get a mortgage you know what it what it is for your 30 years so um it, it just helps kind of create a bigger picture on your living circumstance mm -hmm. yeah there's definitely s some deci some difficult decisions that can be made easier uh, by talking to a real estate professional um, and some challenges for first-time home buyers um, d uh, least of which is the down payment and the closing costs coming up with them yeah um so are are, are, are you are you parenting a huge um, uh, request for down payment assistance application? That's my market, so I am. Well, and I do have to say, I, I work with a lot of first-time home buyers, and you know, a lot of people are scared to ask for closing costs because of the sellers, you know, not wanting to pay those. But listing homes, I do know that I do have those conversations with my sellers and say, hey, you know, we're wanting this dollar amount for the home, but is there a dollar amount you're willing to pay towards the buyer's closing costs? Um, sometimes that might look a little different. We might increase the price of the home a couple thousand dollars um, and still pay some closing costs. So both parties have that win-win situation but I definitely have worked with a lot of uh, over the last couple years even um, of people asking for closing costs and sellers are, are, are okay with that because they've been there you know they yeah. bought their first home there's a lot of nice sellers out there that are willing to do that um, we had a, a Deb, Deb and I had a, uh, a borrower recently that um, was was a VA so she went zero down on the down payment um, and we had the seller Deb negotiated the seller to pay four percent towards the closing costs. So in the end, the 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 buyer ended up uh, getting her her deposit for her for her down payment back, her earnest money money back, um, as well as her appraisal deposit back, as well as one hundred fifty dollars back because it was a duplex, um, and she was paid rent for the last week of the of the month. So it can really work out really well. Yeah, and I think um, to your point too, is just talking to a, a realtor um, and know that they know the market, they know the area that you're looking in uh, because strong negotiation skills is key in this market. Um, if you're um, working with a, a seller that hasn't had that conversation about helping with down payments or, I mean, I'm so sorry, um, closing costs and things like that, it might be a little bit harder 
you know, to get that point across when they have a dollar in mind. But I think really having good negotiation skills on the realtor's end um, and voicing what you need in working with your lender, um, I think you can make a deal come together. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Um. So some of the um, benefits of, of our, our, our next uh, guest will be uh, Karina Obar. Obar from Washington State Housing Finance Commission. And uh, she will be talking to us about down payment, pro her, their down payment of programs. Um, and some of the benefits to having down payment assistance in, in your loan is uh, it helps you purchase a home sooner. Yes, yes. Um, and that's, I think, kind of where I was going back to, um, you know, a lot of people have that misconception of that 20% down when really, when they talk to a real estate um, agent that knows what the market is, 3.5% when they talk to their lender is 3, 3.5% plus down payment assistance. There's so many options to get into homes for, for less money. Yes, there's probably never been more options available to the first time home buyer. And right. never have they been more needed um, with the prices the way that they are relative to the average wage. And if you think about it, if you're renting, they're usually asking for first, last, and a deposit. That's a lot of money if you're talking about a $2,300 single-family rental for a home. So, I mean, that's a down payment. <laughs> it's yeah, exactly. Exact thing, <laughs> except you're putting it in their trust account instead of in your equity. And if you were to get that money back, then then you're actually gaining. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, we are just um, ready to uh, go to our break, and we will be back with Karina Obar. Some statistics are surprising, some are unbelievable, and some are simply unacceptable. Right now, nearly 30% of U.S. students aren't finishing high school. Nearly 30%, and that's the average. In many places, it's even higher than that. And fixing it is a responsibility that we all share. This is President Obama, and I urge everyone, not just parents, but friends and neighbors and family members, to take responsibility for encouraging the high school students in your communities, to support them, challenge them, push them a little, and do whatever it takes to help them make it through. Because this is one statistic we simply can't afford to ignore. You can do your part by going to boostup.org and sending an email, a text message, or even a wake-up call to a student at risk of dropping out. Go to boostup.org and provide the boost that's needed to make it to graduation. A message from the U.S. Army and the Ad Council. This is you over 30 years ago. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And this is your mom when you drive her back from therapy. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Roles change without us noticing. And in your new role, we help you help. AARP gives you the information to help care for your mom so that you can have patience with her, just like she did with you. Visit aarp.org caregiving or call 1-877-333-5885 to get practical health and wellness tips to provide even better care for your loved one. Are we there yet? Remember, visit aarp.org caregiving. AARP, we help you help. A public service announcement brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Okay, and we are back. 
And we have in the studio with us Corina Obar from the Washington State Housing Finance Commission. And Corina, uh, you're the manager of the homeownership division of the Washington State Finance Housing Finance Commission. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, about about the WSHFC and um, the home ownership division. Absolutely. So thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here with both of you today. And um, yes, I am the manager of the home ownership division at the Washington State Housing Finance Commission. I live in Edmonds. I moved to Seattle from Hawaii, and part of my background includes um, retail banking and mortgage lending. So I've been in that field for over 25 years and so I started as a teller and I moved my way up to supervisor and branch manager and during that stint or throughout my career um, I also taught for some home buyer education classes with the commission and for me that was really rewarding being able to see people um, get the information, get educated, and go out there and be being able to buy a home with some of the programs that are out there. Um, I love working at the commission because we help put home ownership within reach for families across the state of Washington. And what we do at the commission, or my job at the commission, is not to only oversee the home ownership division or the daily operations, but implementing our programs to help families across the state um, get homes. As a matter of fact, we not you know I not only oversee the the loan programs, but the home buyer education programs um, that we have uh, our participating lenders and real estate professionals teach. We also I also collaborate with nonprofit partners or in partnerships with nonprofits and state municipalities to develop down payment assistance programs to help low to moderate income households in the state of Washington. So. Th Wow, it's my passion to to help people get into homes. It's it's been really fun. Yeah, yes. that that that's that's quite a role. Um, that's 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 quite a lot. Um, so how how is the Washington State Housing Finance Commission funded? So our we are a self supporting agency of the state, and none of our funding comes from the taxpayers of the of Washington State. We are self funded, so. Our funds um, come from a combination of sources, such as you know issuing bonds or federal tax credits or even the open market. So we do not rely at all on any taxpayer funds um, to support what we do at the agency. And how many how many families do you help in a year or in a month? So, uh, in 2017, we help over 6,000 families get into homes. 6,000. Wow. My goodness, that. That is a lot. Wow. It is. We are very proud of the programs that we do offer to be able to, to get low to moderate income families into homes. Yeah. So what role does down payment assistance play? Uh, what, what does it have to do with it? I don't understand. Okay, so what we found, why the need for down payment assistance? So we found that, or, you know, one of the biggest obstacles for home buyers is having the down payment or saving the down payment. Um, you know, we, there are qualified borrowers out there that can afford a monthly mortgage, but trying to save for that 20% down payment is really out of reach, especially for the low to moderate income households. I mean, everyone has a day-to-day -day expense that they're dealing with, along with their monthly expenses, not to mention putting food on the table. So uh, trying to save for a down payment is really hard. So we have the down payment assistance to help bridge that gap for that bar so, th so they can get into a home of their own. So it's, you're not talking about 20% down payment, are you? No, no. I mean, we have, so in, in, a, in a loan, type of loan situation, you know, you can put as little as 3% down, and our down payment assistance could cover that, not only that down payment piece, but also towards closing costs and prepays on a mortgage. Excellent. And what about a veteran zero down? Do you help them too? Absolutely. We do have programs for veterans with an honorable discharge. Um, we also have programs uh, for non-veterans as well. So you would cover the closing costs on a veterans deal, right? Absolutely. We have seen transactions where that's what the down payment assistance funds have been used for was towards closing costs and prepaids. So who can qualify for one of these programs? So 
first of all, all our programs are, are used by lenders and banks um, out there in the community all over the state of Washington. So the bar would go to a participating lender to get qualified like any other home loan um, out there. So with our program, that typically means you know you have fairly good credit and our minimum credit score for most of our programs is 620. And our programs have income, lim income limits, but that varies by program. Um, but currently, the upper limit is 97000 annual household income. So again, it varies by program. Now, all of our programs are listed on our website, and each program goes over the eligibility requirements, and you can find those at our heretohome.org link going to our website. So it, it, it goes through every step um, for each particular program that they're looking at, whether it's the first mortgage program or the down payment assistance program that's to be used with the first mortgage program. So in order to access the down payment assistance program, it'd be used with our first mortgage program. And we do have two first mortgage programs that we do offer to our low to moderate income households. And you can find all of that information again on our website. And it goes into detail what the eligibility requirements are. So tell me, a first mortgage, how, how does that work? Is, is, it, are you, is the state giving the mortgage or is this... Uh, is the state so the pro so participating lenders participate in our programs. So the lender would qualify the buyer like any other loan, whether it's an FHA loan, a VA loan, USDA, or even or a conventional loan. So um, so the the loan officer will be responsible for doing that, and then the the loan when it closes basically it closes in the name of the lender um, and then it's then funded by the lender, and then we in turn purchase those loans from the lender. So we use our funds to do that. Yeah. So it's a first mortgage and a second mortgage. The second mortgage is the down payment assistance, right? Correct. Um, and how much is, how, so it would cover the 3% down payment or the 3.5% down payment for FHA? Correct. Um, and then some? Correct. Absolutely. So we, we have several different um, down payment programs that we offer at any given um, time. So for example, with our Home Advantage uh, program, the, the down payment assistance can be either up to 4% of the loan amount, which can be used towards the down payment, towards closing costs, and towards prepaids. Um, and then we have other down payment assistance um, that may be used in other demographics, such as um, you know Bellingham, City of Bellingham, and or, or City of Tacoma or Pierce County. So these are some of the state municipalities that we have partnered with to be able to order uh, or offer some down payment assistance to to potential home buyers. So if I owned a house before, mm -hmm. can I still qualify? Oh, absolutely. We have programs for uh, both first-time and non-first-time home buyers. So as you are looking on our website, on our programs, it'll, it'll give you the eligibility requirements whether you need to be a first-time home buyer or not. So over the years, we found that in the marketplace, especially right when um, you know, we had the, the depression, when the market um, did turn back in 2007, 2008, you know, we found that there are people who had homes that didn't have enough equity in their homes, and, so, and but they needed to, you know, buy another home. So we have the, the Home Advantage program, which is an open market program that allows that um, new, that home buyer, who is not a first-time home buyer, be able to buy another home um, and utilizing not only that particular first mortgage program, but utilize our down payment assistance to bridge that gap to buying that uh, another you know, primary residence for these borrowers. So yes, absolutely, we do have programs for both first and non first time home buyers. So so let me ask you, it, what if what if you have a a buyer who actually has cash in, in the bank enough for a down payment, would you still give them down payment assistance? Absolutely. A bar can use their cash as well as use our down payment assistance to bridge that gap. As a matter of fact, you know, we have, we've talked about um, loans, layered loans. In other words, we've had one where there was, a, it was a five layer loan, meaning it was, they used our first mortgage program, they used our down payment assistance program, and there were other down payment, community second down payment assistance programs out there that they were used to bridge that gap, and I believe the total amount of down payment assistance to help this bar was about eighty-five thousand dollars. 
so it was huge. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah wow. That means so, they would qualify for a, a, a much nicer house, doesn't it? Sure, absolutely. Because let's say you know you you have the purchase price here. This is what the borrower qualifies for. So in order to bridge that gap, they needed to come up with eighty five thousand dollars, and that's where our program came in, as well as some of the other community second programs out there to bridge to give that family the amount they needed to be able to get into that home. And then maybe they were actually able to buy a home that was livable when they moved in, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, in, in the market that we have today, you know, the prices are, you know, it's, it's definitely a very competitive market. Um, and having, you know, bars try to save up for that type of down payment, especially for first-time home buyers, it's not possible sometimes. And so, you know, you know, through through our several different down payment programs, people can get over that barrier, we feel. Yeah, well, great. Right. Yeah, once again, we're talking with um, Karina Obar. She's from the Washington State Housing Finance Commission, and we're talking to her about down payment assistance. Um, and we um, are always, um, you know, anxious to know um, your thoughts and your comments. Um, so please, um, you can follow us on Facebook at Locking It In. And if you have questions um, after the show, um, post them on our Facebook page or send us an email at ask at LockingItIn.com. Okay, um, so um, let me, let me uh, just... Um, as, so, h how many how many people did you say are currently uh, using down payment assistance? So, since inception, when we got created in 1983, as a matter of fact, um, the commission got uh, created in 1983 by the state legislature to help, as well as preserve affordable housing for the for people in the state of Washington. And we're proud to say that we have helped over 70,000 people get into homes since 1983 with our programs. Excellent. Wow. And it keeps awesome. growing, which is great. It, it's, you know, it's funny that the thing out there was we were a well-kept secret. And we don't want to be a well-kept secret because we want people, you know, w that's our mission is to help families get into homes, <laughs> especially families with low to moderate income. So, <laughs> so how many banks and mortgage companies do you work with in in, in Puget Sound or in Washington State? So we have at le over 110 participating lenders in our programs. Okay, so it's a lot. It's, it's a lot. Is it a majority or? It probably is. We do have um, some ma uh, major players in our program. Um, like I said, we do have 110 that participate. Now, within those lenders or those companies, there's a huge amount of uh, loan officers that participate um, in our programs and being able to originate those programs with their potential borrowers. So yes, we, d we do see quite a few um, uh, loan files come through all over the state. So our program is available to, uh, for the entire state of Washington. Doesn't matter where you're buying in Washington, it's just um, available to home buyers. Okay, um, right, is this? program available in other states or is it just a Washington state? Well, so each state has their own programs. So for example, um, Idaho does have their own program, but for our programs, it's strictly to be used um, if you're buying your primary residence in the state of Washington. But yes, all over the country, there are housing finance agencies that do exactly what we do. Uh, it's just a different programs, but yes, they, ha they each have their own programs for low to moderate income households. Um, the commission not only finances uh, finance, uh, finance um, single family homes, but we also have divisions that um, finance affordable apartments, or um, we also offer programs to finance um, non-housing. So people can go onto our website and read all about um, the different divisions uh, in the commission. Um, however, my focus is the home ownership division and the home loan programs that we do offer. So we do, um, you know, we have people that call in and want to know how, how they can get into apartments that maybe the commission has financed. And we do have a department that does those types of um, financing for apart affordable apartments as well okay. as non-housing. What, what kinds of homes do you do? Do you do manufactured homes, condos? 
one to four units. So for our program, we, we deal with one unit, single family residence, which means either a house, a condo, a townhome, or even a manufactured home. Absolutely. Or so half of a duplex? We do just one unit, just one unit, single family. So again, a condo or a house, manufactured, townhome. Absolutely. So how does the Washington State Housing Finance Commission um, educate and advertise their programs? Okay, so we rely a lot on our um, lending and real estate professionals to also market our programs. And um, so on our, when a person or potential home buyer wants to access our programs, we um, recommend that they, they start going to our website, heretohome.org. And we recommend that you know anyone interested in buying a home starts with one of our free commission-sponsored home buyer education class um, seminar. It is a requirement um, to access the program to to go or attend our commission-sponsored home buyer education class. But not only that, most importantly, it's just available or or receiving valuable information um, for anyone entering into the market, especially for first-time home buyers. Um, they'll learn everything they need to know to become a successful home buyer. Um, they'll find it in it to be able to tell if they're ready to buy a home or the next steps to get to that point. What type of assistance are out there? You know, how many different programs they'll talk about. The instructors talk about our programs, not only on the first mortgage side, but all of the down payment assistance that we do offer, as well as how to how the loan officer can help them find the best mortgage for them. Also, you know, they do have the subject matter experts, such as the real estate professional that's part of this class. It tells them, you know, how to negotiate, um, what's involved with the purchase and sale agreement, what does it cover. And they also incorporate guest speakers in these seminars, meaning they probably bring in a home inspector to talk about uh, why a home inspection is important. Um, now these are again first time homebuyers. They're they're receiving knowledge. They want to. They're hungry for information to make sure that you know this is the biggest purchase of their life, and it's a huge purchase. So they want to make sure that they're going down the right path. And all and, and these seminars, it, it's it's free. So you start with a class. Um, so if you start with a class, you'll be you know set up for the whole process, and and really sit down and, and get all the information that you need in order to be successful in, in getting you know in buying your first home. How much do these classes cost? So again, our home buyer education classes um, that are taught by co-taught by a lending professional and real estate professional is free, and these classes are are taught statewide. They're co-instructed um, statewide, and um, they're instructed by the lenders and real estate professionals that are trained by the commission. And again, on our website, you will find all of the uh, where the classes are held, in what city, and what county, and when they are and um, how to sign up for those classes. Okay. Well, thank you. We're going to uh, take another break. We'll be right back. <laughs> hey, everyone. You know, let's all stop what we're doing right now and take a moment. That felt good, huh? Just like that, we had a nice special sort of moment, together. Of course, they don't all need to be quiet moments to be special. They could be loud moments, goofy moments, sporty moments, dorky moments. Moments where we talk or walk or just hang out. It doesn't really matter. They all count. Because every time dads like us take a moment like that to spend with our kids, well, it's pretty momentous. <laughs> Sounds like somebody agrees. So let's take a moment to make a moment. Today, call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Well, Jason, I've got to tell you, you're pretty much everything this company is looking for in an entry-level candidate. Great. Your resume isn't quite what we're used to, but you've got a fantastic work ethic. Thank you. And I'm impressed by how you carry yourself. So, should we talk about the job? Uh, what? The job? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I have no way of recruiting or even meeting you. This interview didn't happen. 
It may sound ridiculous, and that's because it kind of is. There's a huge pool of talent your company is missing out on. Meet the grads of life. Who are they? Talent worth knowing about. Young adults of unique determination and experience. An ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or even mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. Man, we really could have used him. Don't miss out on a resource many innovative companies have already discovered. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. Okay, we're back, and we're here in the studio with Corinna Marina Obar from the Washington State Housing Finance Commission, and we are talking about down payment assistance. Uh, thank you, Karina, uh, for being with us today. Um, My pleasure. Yeah. Uh, next week in the studio, we have Roger Merrill. He's an inspector, and of course, we're talking about home inspections. And if you would like to um, raise a question for the show, um, you can follow us on Facebook at Locking It In, or send us an email at ask at lockingitin.com. Okay, Corinna, once again, thank you for being in the studio with us today and, and, and for spending the time and to help our, our listener um, uh, get informed on this very important topic. Um, so do you, do you have a, a, an anecdote, a story uh, about uh, someone, something that, that you know, has a particular uh, meaning for you? Oh, absolutely. So... You know, really, we have gr- rare. We have a lot. We have many great stories, and uh, the one that comes to mind is last year, we helped a family of five from Tacoma to buy their first home. Uh, Juliet and her family had been heavily renting a townhome while she finished school, but they had you know outgrown that space and were hoping to move into a home or a house. And she was, at that time, she was working very hard to get her degree, and then together she and her husband were able to afford a mortgage, but just didn't have the down payment or the money saved for a down payment to get started. So no no funds for down payment or closing costs or prepays. And then with our help, they were able to buy a four-bedroom home um, with enough space for everyone in Tacoma. So we're really excited. And on that topic... If you go to our website, you see all of our marketing materials that we offer on our website for to use, um, any of our um, annual statements that we put out by the commission, and any posters that we have that our lending and real estate professionals use. Those the pictures on those marketing materials are families that we have actually helped using our programs. So we use you know actual families. So we're really proud about that. I mean, you know, and you know, helping seventy thousand home buyers. I mean. We do have a lot of stories, but um, I just wanted to give the most recent one from last year, family that we were able to help. Yeah. So we look to our lending and real estate professionals to provide stories of bars that they were able to help using our programs. We're always re- out there at, you know, reaching out for, prog- for uh, stories so we can feature those families on our marketing materials, on our annual reports, um, and get their stories because there might be people out there who are in the same situation thinking that could, they could never buy home because they don't have that down payment assistance and they just need that extra help to get them there. And um, it's, it's really important. So we look for stories all the time from lenders and real estate professionals that do our programs. Yeah. Doing good. Great. Now, is there anything else that we haven't covered that's important for the audience to, to know, Karina? Well, again, I think um, it can seem impossible to, to buy home in, in a tough ho- a housing market like ours. But I think if um, you bring or you, you let people know that there are tools that are available out there to help them get past that barrier, especially when it comes to the down payment assistance money or um, you know, getting closing costs. Because I know that sometimes in a tough market, it, it's, you know, sellers sometimes don't want to you know, give um, help towards the down payment or closing costs. But there are tools out there. As a matter of fact, um, you know, there are some uh, Northwest or uh, some MLSs out there that partner with um, 
what a down payment resource and what that does is as a borrower or potential home buyer is looking at listings out there affordable homes that there's an icon they can click on that shows them hey you know there are down payment assistance available possibly for this house that you're looking to purchase and our programs come up on that listing when it's an affordable home yeah for a low to moderate income household so there's tools out there for people um, to help them get into homes absolutely excellent yeah, that's great. So, 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 Perrin, when you're processing one of these loans, um, is, what what is the difference uh, at your end? Um, it, it it's really simple. The, uh, frankly, the 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 guidelines that that the Washington State Housing Finance Commission has are not different. They very very there's very little difference between their guidelines and the guidelines of a regular FHA conventional or VA loan. Um, so it, it's really straightforward. It's really not not hard right so the lender would pre-qualify the borrower based on what they can qualify and so as far as our down payment assistance are it, it is a second mortgage and the interest rate can range from zero percent to a very low interest rate depending on the program and on our down payment assistance you don't make a monthly payment the payments are deferred um, but because it is a loan you end up paying it back at some point whether you're um, refinancing your loan or you the property is no longer your primary residence you sell the property or 30 years later whichever comes first but for our down payment assistance they don't make a payment while they have it that is a great benefit yeah that it truly is, that is, is really great. right That's yeah wonderful. it is we're we're very passionate about our programs as well as the home buyer education classes wow. that is taught around the state. All right, Corinna, thank you. You've had been such a trove of information. Uh, Corinna Obar from the Washington State Housing Finance Commission, thank you very much. Next week we have Roger Merrill, and the topic will be inspections. Thank you for listening to Locking It In.